Uh, uh, y'all were talking sassy about me yesterday. We don't ever talk sassy no, about I, I you. No, I knew it wasn't really mean spirited, but um, it was I, a false report that was on the internet. What was, what was the was report? It? it was a report on the internet about that me. no, about the uh, the other members of Hole suing you. Patty's playing with me, and so we corrected that. Jim Barber called us and told us that is not true, hmm. but it was on the internet. You right. involved in a suit? No. no. This is the guy that reported it, Steve. Yeah, I'm the guy she's going to kick the crap out of. What happened was uh, somebody, uh, a listener and, a, and a, a parent fan, probably not anyway, because there's a lot of the, the anti Courtney Love whole stuff. She's around. polarizing? But that's, I, I'm, I'm well, polarizing. you know. Exactly. But this person said that they, they had heard or read on a website called blabbermouth.com that. Oh, you, yeah, sure, it's lovely. It sounds reliable. Yeah. <laughs> no, that there was a, 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 like a, a non um, a malicious suit. Basically saying that uh, Patty and Eric were suing you to pretty much get to the record label so they could get the same amount of money that they would have gotten had the contract no, gone on I, and whatever. Eric so. made a press release. It's sort of we broke up, sort mm -hmm. of, because yeah. it's costing Eric too much money. So, if, But if, if we do get money, which we won't, we'll win the suit, but... Then I give I give Eric his yeah. Hair. So he someone I guess, yeah they took that yeah. and twisted it all around and, and of course I, I took to the, the he, source. He probably will join. I my bet is that he'll join Marilyn Manson. I hope he doesn't get mad at me. I thought you yeah. were gonna say Molly Crew like Samantha did. No, that was sort of Sam is 22 years old and for her that was like a big deal. That's and cool. I have to I saw say when show. I saw Sam playing girls, girls, girls with Molly Crew, something was wrong. I cried out of like sheer like the weird beautifulness of it all. It was I never liked Motley Crew, but it was like. What I came to L.A. to destroy, yeah. and you served. It oh, was, the best part about all the... I mean, uh, this chick is playing with yeah, Motley Crue. Yeah. It was just... Uh, I started to cry. It, it was so moving. I mean, the, the, forget Hal Berry and Denzel and the whole... The, that... Right. That made me crazy. It was great. The best part about all the behind the musics with the... I can't hear my earphones. Oh, oh really? Okay. The volume. Yeah, I was saying the best part with uh, all the behind the musics with the 80s bands is like, they're like, oh, life was great. We were number one on the charts, selling millions of records. And then all of a sudden that song came along. And it's like, down, da down, to get the down, down, to get down, down, down. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, so it, Courtney comes up here and uh, has, you, you, the song wasn't even fully written this morning, right? No, it wasn't. It was eight minutes long and I thought I could kind of play it by myself. <laughs> And uh, then I forgot the lyrics, and who picked me up? Rich. Written it well. Todd, Todd picked you up. up. Yeah, and I, uh, and I was writing the lyrics in the car, and I forgot them all, and then no one would wake up in L.A., and it was 3 in the morning, and then Rich was here. <laughs> Thank God, and uh, then people started waking up and and giving me the lyrics. I wrote it about a, a week and a half ago. Right, Rich. Uh, Rich was playing. Rich has been working Rich on the song with totally you. Totally playing. He's, he's good. He's really good. Uh huh. This is, okay. this is good. There's no doubt. And I got free recording time out of it. Yeah, James, <laughs> uh, our Mag Daddy James Ferry engineered it for Courtney. It was great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, now, when and we wrote it. Song. We sort of rewrote it, and re and you and you, you know. The, you know, Eric's memoirs are going to be called Poor Eric, and uh -huh. the guy that, that, you know, I'm not a very good guitar player. I have style, but uh, sometimes I don't have that masculine rigidity that one needs. Right. So there's, I usually need, like, a guy to help. Isn't that awful? I said that. Anyway, oh, yeah. um, uh, I'm just so glad he was here because I would have sucked. Oh, she's, yeah, she's giving me way too much credit. You know what, uh, as I was watching, because I've only been in one other recording session ever uh, with Collective Soul one time, and when I was just watching you guys work together, and now it makes sense why you always read about, like, bands getting in fights in recording sessions. It's so intense in there. It's like Like sex. the creative process. It is. It's like the creative process yeah. is so intense. It's, so it's, I said, okay, we're going to go in there and it's going to be like sex. So, but you know what oh, you yeah. want. Keep your eye contact. Uh -huh. I know that ring's nice and shiny, but, <laughs> but you know, and we, you know, it's important to keep your eye contact. And but when you're when you're in the studio doing a record, do you feel like you're a perfectionist? Is it hard for you to like take direction from a producer? Well, I learned a lot from filmmakers about that. Actually, I learned more from filmmakers about that than I learned from rock, um, which is yes, but also no, because um, I think Michael Beinhorn spent three million on Celebrity Skin. I find out later, and, and he just spent 4.3 on the corn record, so he beat he beat wow. his record. Uh -huh. do, you, do you wow. like do you like how some of the newer records are sounding like the White Stripes direction, like stripped down oh, and just raw man. and, yeah, and I the have strokes? Yeah, I have Devo, which is we everyone should get. And oh, I, it's great. I got love Top it. of the Pops, and I saw the Hives. We love the Hives. Yeah. And um, in September, I, I'm I'm I'm, gonna, I'm on that label in England, Pop Tones, and and uh, and. 
I, you know, I was just, I was so happy, but I thought, you know, it's not going to sell or anything. And right after was Puddle of Mud, which, you know, I had done my whole sniffing around Fred thing. And at one point he, uh, he said, you know, come to SIR and see my Nirvana band. <laughs> oh, I love this story. <laughs> you know this story? I heard you told this story in Austin. <laughs> radio, I know. This is great. Oh, but he, he, I said, oh, yeah, because I'll really, you know, validate that. And, um... <laughs> Uh, and he had told me a story about some kid from Austin who gave him a tape, and then he got the guy all new players. That's not a real band. But the cool thing was to see the hives, and then right after that, to see Puddle of Mud, and just to see the change of the cycle, finally. I felt like I could go out to malls and, like, rip off out of these red hats. It's going to be about a year. But, yeah. <laughs> which is what happened, you know, and I, and I, and I told my, the guy at K-Rock, you know, like, that the Strokes thing is not Nirvana. It's not the same thing. But all cycles are different, and he was like, "Yeah, but you like chop suey still, right?" I'm like, "Yeah, some of it's fine, but you know, don't expect you know." The the one Red Hat's gonna be gone. Yeah. We don't. It's Brett Michaels. We're ready to retire it too. Yeah, everybody is. I mean, uh, MTV is. Um, the one song I was gonna bring up. Have you heard Polo Mud's uh, "She Hates Me"? Is it about me? No, no. Oh. But, but just his aggression in that song, it's the closest thing to the someone sounding like Kurt that I've ever heard. Really? Oh, that's, that's, that's yeah, an odd thing to say since everybody seems to. I mean, well, you're this not is a the huge... closest. Well, America, I mean, didn't notice the transition from Eddie to Scott Stapp, so, you know, I think that... <laughs> oh, they noticed. Yes, they did. They did not. Well, it's that did. transcendent stadium rock thing. They just, it's Springsteen, Scott Stapp, Eddie, we don't care. We just want to worship Jesus thing. We just want to wave our hands out there. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney, how, how frustrating has it been for you? I mean, you're a performer... You've been in all this legal crap with the record company, and yeah. you, and it's prevented you from doing what you love to do. Uh, no, actually, I've worked a lot. We have about 12 songs. Only nine are good. But that are recorded? Yeah, it's not that expensive, actually. It started with Brett Gerwitz from Epitaph giving us, like, 50 grand, and then he heard it, and he goes, I thought you were going to make a punk record. I can't afford to... These are hits. <laughs> like, <laughs> not Pennywise, but uh, that you know that he had the balls to do it, and then and then two majors have turned up, and you know on my terms, which are <laughs> tough. Um, but but um, so you think? Do you foresee though that we'll be able to get some new music to play on the radio? September, I have a record coming, a single. Remember singles? Um, yeah. in, coming out in England, the old-fashioned way on Pop Tones, and by then, yeah. I think that by spring it'll be resolved. I have a mediation, in fact, with um, uh, the president of, of what label was I on? Oh, um, Universal. 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 Yeah, he's got a thick head of hair. Um, and uh, I have a mediation with him next week. So good and luck just with that. me and him in the room. No, I haven't had him alone in the room. Is this the problem? Have you just been locked into this contract forever? Was it like a ten album deal or something? No, it's just when the mergers happen. When you know it, we've had you know nine eleven and and the FCC has disappeared and you know watching uh, not that and your listeners. Well, I hope some of your listeners care, but watching the stock stock exchange you know reform itself. It's like wait till I write my op ed at the Wall Street Journal about the music business and hits magazine cash envelopes. No, I won't get to pay all in there. So. <laughs> I mean that's a necessary evil but no there's just there's no accountability and it's a publicly publicly held company so i just didn't want to be involved in this merger i never wanted to be on interscope i just didn't i had met with them i didn't like it over there it was all about you know jimmy's taste which is death row and 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 that kind of violence and i i was like well, what about when i turn 40 and make my mature record you know, or and at one point he said to me, um, I wish you were still on heroin because I could market you better. And I was just like, Jeez. This is just when she talks about it, I all could depends pretend on Jimmy's I'll case, which she she's referring to the fact that I have a lot of power in the record. Yeah, <laughs> she's oh, yeah. Oh, Jimmy <laughs> Ivey. Oh, Jimmy you know, Ivey. I'm sorry, I thought like you were a PT Barnum guy. I mean, he spent like eight million on Manson, and at one point he looked at me and he goes, "How come Manson doesn't sell as much as Zombie?" And I said, "Because Manson has tits, Jimmy." That alienates guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, he just, I mean, he just has his M&M thing and his taste, and that's his deal. I think and no. I'm afraid for Nirvana to come out on his label, too. And I, I think I, they just, I don't know. I mean, when Kim Gordon was running Geffen, nobody made her the president, but Fred got to be the president of, of my label. Fred Durst is my boss, 
Now that's frightening. Yeah, it's like Brett Michaels being my boss. Yeah. Yeah. We've heard so much secondhand talk about what actually is going on with the Nirvana box set. <laughs> I know. It's, it's... Well, you, you know, because it's in Spin this month and Rolling Stone this month. Yeah. What's Your the... fight with Grohl and Novoselic and... What would you like from me now? Silence. Well, let me let me ask you this question about. Uh, it. Okay. No, you go know ahead. Whatever. I mean, it's uh, because you know, band. every artist has every artist has fans and detractors. You know, you have people who like your music. Especially you have people, me. Yeah, but you have people. You know, you have people who like your music. You have people who don't like your music. Whatever. There are people who like 99X. People who hate 99X. Well, yeah, but, and, and and chicks singing rock is a polarizing. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it is. Um, but like when we mentioned that you know you were going to come on and everything. The emails started coming in, and it seems like was it the 50, people... Was it 50 or 80-20? Well, I can tell but you... you've got to remember that people, like, in country... I know this from the country country radio format, that if some there's something with too many requests, they take it off. Because it's the people that pick up the phone. It's a small right. part of a demographic. Yeah. I was going to say... Yeah, yeah, right. I was going to say, most of the ma mail we got was negative, but that's because... People aren't usually inclined to send in positive email. It's negative right. feedback right. that you usually get. Oops, but sure. the people who don't who don't like you seem to be uh, fans, big fans of Nirvana. Well, that's the newest thing, yeah. That's so, that's so my question here is: Does that bother you that the people who really yeah, seem to be detractors the, are Nirvana the fans? Because the trial that I have with Universal is so much more important for hundreds of thousands of musicians from generations past and generations future. And this is a small, stupid, dumb case. I got suckered into a, a trendy uh, law back in the a trendy law back in the '90s um, that they don't even do anymore, called an LLC, and it just no one's losing any money and and what's happening is that that back catalog is being liquidated and me and my daughter are the heirs and it's just and they can't run it and I don't I don't just that's all and that's what and that's the, what the judge is probably going to say it's, it's not really, about isn't it about to an extent like people who are saying wait a minute how can she think that she has as much well, entitlement as Dave and Chris that's a really interesting thing because you're talking about trial by 15 year olds and when we form our <laughs> band you know in, 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 the, in the American Constitution you know we have an institution known as marriage and um, and we also have things called last wills and testaments and you know we make our intentions clear in those and those were made clear by uh, my, my former husband and and uh, that and it, it was I was just you know snookered into this mm -hmm. thing by some pretty foxy lawyers so it it, it it doesn't really take away their power particularly it takes away their power to be able to do and say things and and why do i put this you know it's just this is a guy that i was married to and we did that by choice and um that's that's the law in America. Now, when you're young and you start your band, you know, everybody wants to go on that REM model. I know that I do. I, I offer equity. I offered Sam equity. She was like, salary. Thank you. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, when uh, when Nirvana was started, it was sort of for a moment equal. And then, it, and, then, and then he said, forget it. You guys are all millionaires. I wrote all the songs. I wrote every note of almost every song. And that's this is my band and he refused to sign a partnership agreement with them and made that a very clear thing and so that's that I the mean, thing the thing i'm and, not and clear here's about the other thing too if i wasn't a public person mm -hmm. who polarized people because of my persona or my job or whatever and i was priscilla presley or something you know there would be no question about this mm -hmm. so it's you, just dumb. you actually are Priscilla Presley of a particular generation. No, I'm not. Well, in the you sense can't that say you were, that. I, well, I can't. I, the, I actually hire somebody else to go be Priscilla Presley because I don't want to do that. I mean, in a, in a positive way, in that How you're. Is, well, what, what I mean, what I mean is that you I'm gonna were be married. Gun, you were married gun, to gun, the Elvis naked of his. Gun no, you were, you, were, <laughs> you were married to the to the Elvis of a gener of a particular generation. Yeah, but right. I'm so. an Elvis too. So of course you know, you, you're. Vecina. <laughs> I guess sort of, you know, so so it was, you know. Yeah. And he, he kind of only dated chicks in bands. He was a bit of a group. Who was? Kurt. Kurt was? I at least think yeah. he dated architects and stuff. Nice. You dated architects? I dated one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't see, I, yeah. I don't know if I can. I think I broke the uh, I broke the dating A and R line though. The last you person did. to do that was Stevie Nicks. So there you go. Yeah, uh -huh. I actually went She's over. She's great, isn't she? Yeah. 
But I, well, I crossed the weasel line. I don't believe I did it. No, he's not a weasel anymore, but I actually, like... Hey, I, you de-weaseled him. Fell in love yeah. with my, uh, my aunt. I don't want it to be rehashed, but maybe I'm not getting it. Where's the stalemate? Because I read that, that you know, that you would like uh, a package of Nirvana, maybe some unreleased stuff to be released, and, and same with the other two guys. Yeah. So what's, what's the problem? The, How come it's... The problem is libelous to talk about on the air. I mean, the problem is uh, people that were really, really mean to Kurt when he was alive, making a huge amount of money, using a lot of power, gaining a lot of power, becoming presidents of companies. Um, the, I, mean, I don't really want to get into it. So you much, want the money redirected into the No, 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 the money, the money's fine. It, they have their money from their masters. They are millionaires for life. But and, for this new stuff, or the, this new And the Foo Fighters deal is probably the best recording deal in the world including Metallica and Madonna and I don't know how that got leveraged because certainly I don't have a deal like that um, you know peace but it is it is I don't know it just it's it's illegal the way that it was set up and that's kind of all there is to it and I'm getting on with my life and that I, that that case is you can't have 16 year olds saying you know a band is a band it's like yeah a band is a band and there's always a leader mm -hmm. and in the 90s, we didn't call ourselves Brian Adams, you know, or Jimi Hendrix. So. Hang on a minute. What's going on? Evacuate, evacuate the, the building. building. Yeah. Give me a long, give me a long uh, CD. We are have you to serious? Evacuate the, building. evacuate the building? Yeah. Look what happens when you roll into town. <laughs> can, we stay, can we stay in here? I know. <laughs> the smoke alarm went off. It's a total <laughs> No, I don't know. Can we stay in no. here? I don't believe him. Well, I don't want to stay. Can Somebody we? else can run point. I'm having one of those weeks where it just keeps getting worse. No, oh, okay. Not that you haven't brightened my day. It's pretty weird. I, was, that's pretty. Where? All the lights. Okay. I, uh, that was, okay. I saw that flicker. Yeah. All right. All right let's oh, go. Christ. Yeah, I was digging this. Well, what, what are <laughs> well, we going to do? Uh, we'll come well, back. Well, because we Courtney play the wants song. to perform a song. So. Right. And I've been hearing them working on this song. This song is great. Okay. This song is so good, Courtney. So is, is this God and the devil having a fight? But what is going on? Well, I'm well, not do we really have to evacuate the building? Do we really have to yeah, leave? Yeah, we gotta yeah. go. Okay. All right. So, Courtney, we're gonna come back and yeah. you're gonna play a song. Courtney Love on 99X. Okay. How's this for drama, people? It's 99X. 99X. Little uh, electrical surge, real. Apparently, there was, uh, I guess, some kind of just electrical problem in our building, and they had to evacuate the building, and they've let us all up, but we're winded because the elevators are down. I have a bunch of working out DJs. Now, I know that by the sound of the, my, vo my voice, you assume I just climbed about 25 flights of stairs. We're actually only on the fifth floor. We want to squeeze the buttocks, ladies and gentlemen. Get she got a Red Bull. Uh, How uh, bizarre was that? You, are, you know what? It's you. You're just a hurricane. Wherever you go, there is activity. Hey. We're back on the air with Courtney Love on 99X. Remember Carrie, that movie? You got to talk into the mic. I can't hear you. Yeah. They made that about me. What? what? Carrie, 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 Carrie made like, that movie like about Carrie. you. Wherever you go. I want a Coca Cola. Okay, we talked about all the serious stuff yeah, earlier. Yeah, not serious. Let's not crap. talk about anything serious anymore. It seemed to have brought bad luck to Atlanta as I well. I wanted to ask you something fun. I want to ask you if you could, if you uh, have a movie coming out. Oh uh, yeah, I do. You do? What is it? Mm -hmm. Oh come on. <laughs> Get, all right, look, Miss Shy. <laughs> L m m l I didn't want to do thirty million dollar action movies. You're in a but uh, um, my husband is Kevin Bacon, so that I win that Kevin Bacon game now. Love you Kevin are. Kevin Bacon. Is there a uh, a love scene in there? Work with it. Love scene in there? Uh, there's a death love scene where he dies. When's that coming out? No clue. It's an action movie. So you don't get to kiss Kevin Bacon. Oh, I got. <laughs> Necrophilia. He died. Charlie's she kissed him. Charlie Charlie's there, and she looked uh, pretty good last night on the she MTV Awards. Really good. Did you see those? No, I did not watch. Them. Hey, you gotta talk into the mic. Hey, you know what? You also should have heard uh, Ozzy's daughter Kelly singing Madonna. Well, she lip synced it. Somebody oh, she thought did? she sounded a little bit like me or something. Is she, that true? I you thought know, she sounded well, great. I, I, I'll tell you what. She has the she has your stage presence, and that she's very commanding on stage, and she's That's very good. confident on stage. But she, first of all, she lip -synced Synced, which, she did? Oh, yeah, completely. So did, it looked like Eminem lip synced too, and that kind of bothered me. But uh, oh, on the are you talking on the MTV? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, I did the Billboard Awards once, and I didn't lip sync. Uh huh. And um, you sound like crap on those shows if you don't. If you don't lip sync, you can't yeah. hear yourself. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's a there's a delay. It's a whole. You have to kind of grow up a pop singer. Oh, for the song, yeah. can't hear yourself. <laughs> um, yeah. You have to kind of have to grow up a pop singer and do all those 
whatever weird talk shows and stuff to get that right. Could you turn me up a little bit? Somebody? There you are. There, uh, yeah, right, right underneath you. you. Turn me down a little bit because you're blowing me. Uh, I would. There, there, right. That's right underneath. Uh, you, you control your headphones there. My diamonds. Wow. My diamonds. Thank you, my God. They're Bling. not CDs Bling. either. What is that? Is that? These are my. Did you drop those downstairs? I left them. <gasps> you left your diamond ring downstairs? Oh, I left them. Diamond Ooh. post. Those, oh. That's just a post. Holy cow. <laughs> I like them. All right, so uh, you've got a song you want to do for us. Yeah, we do. Remy and Rich, too. Yeah, we, 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 uh, I came in with this, like, nine-minute sprawling opus thinking I could just pull it off, and he was here, and I'm very glad. Should we, uh, do you want to... Do yeah, I got for commercial I, 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 what I, what I, You know what I don't want to do? I don't want to play it on the camera, though. I just that's fine. That's fine. Then I will go everywhere and okay. I'm, I'm all sweaty from right, we'll, we'll the, the webcam. We'll but, the webcam. But uh, then coming out and no one's heard a new song from you in a long time. So. I know. It's, <laughs> so, this is right, exciting. Let's get down to brass text. This is exciting. All Can right. You hear me? Yeah, you got this. Uh, uh -huh. We'll take a break. Let's all right. Just, back with stress. Courtney and that song right after this. It's 99X. And Rich. Rich too. Good morning X. With Buzz, Leslie, and Jimmy. Monday morning, we welcomed Rich back to the Morning X. Yes. What? Axel with Jimmy Barron, Leslie Fram, Courtney Love, Rich Schertenlieb, and we have our uh, production guru, James Ferry, that is going to be producing the song. Now, with he Courtney Love. Yeah, he's, he's, he's in there. You have this great, huge facility now. We right. do. What's, what's the name of the song? It's called, it's called Hold On To Me. It's not even cynical. I mean, this was literally, the bulk of it was written today. Am I right? Yeah, I wrote it a week ago, but it was 12 minutes long. 12 minutes long? <laughs> yeah. Axel we likes to trim, No, I like to trim the fat and get it down to 3 no. minutes and 30 seconds. I know, like we didn't do 3.30. I, to, I told him already. I, it's, it's, I think, a fiver. Cause, That's cause fine. Because the, the 12 minute song, it gives Axel a time for a quick sig. Well, no, it's, I don't have really, to step out now. She's oh, already she's already okay. broken the but toilet <laughs> seal. So. <laughs> Smoke whenever I want. Smoke them if you got them in here. <laughs> After platinum, you can smoke in a radio station. That's my rule. Uh, and that's <laughs> our rule, too, actually. <laughs> All right, we're um, going to let you guys get set up here. Okay. Okay. So anytime you want to go, we'll go. You're on. Go, Rich. Okay. Hey, this life is never fair. The angels that you need are never there. Oh, but sometimes he comes to me. Get our glory, a little bit of fame, but there's no truth at the heart of any of it. Just the brilliance and the passion and the bitterness remains. He brings me down, all down into the ground. I never will get out of here. Oh, 
shivering here What was all that for? If I was the battle, baby, you And if I was the battle, baby, you If I was the battle, baby, you Have won the war Now that that is a, oh, that is phenomenal. That's a world premiere. That is Thanks, great. Mary, I up a bunch of mics in here, and that is great. Unbelievable. When was it? Was Rich? No, no, Courtney. Rich, Courtney. Rich on acoustic guitar. Oh, why can't Miller's Tale sound like that? <laughs> <laughs> Should we play Courtney some Miller's Tale? Oh no, 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 no. I've got a CD for it. I'll give it to her. Oh, okay. Uh, when was the last Sorry. time uh, you released something? Three years ago. Three years ago. Isn't that weird? God, that was great. I know. I woke up this morning. I just wanted to play. Is that how it works? I'm like sort of bored of judges. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, really. Uh -huh. Lawyers and judges. I, is that well, they're boring me? Court. Me, the court. That's, yes. that's, what they've, that's what you've been called. I'll tell you, when we were practicing that earlier, I've never seen someone more passionate about mm -hmm. the song. Like, she would get there and be like, give me more balls! Yeah, all no, right, was the, come on. the word was cock. Oh, oh yeah, wow. I would yeah. the C word. Post-platinum, you also can say it. You can break some FCC. That's right. Yeah. Well, she is, I mean, just going for it. It was... It's, it's so stimulating working with her. It was likewise with you. <laughs> and he didn't give me the, the you know, no martyrdom. And you know what's cool? No, I never had to give him the Norma Desmond look, which is... <laughs> and, and, and I dug, because I got to sit in there and and I got to see some leg. Some serious leg. <laughs> so I, everybody's a winner here. <laughs> everybody's a winner. <laughs> But well, is thanks, that, you guys. Is that kind of how like it works? Like you woke up this morning, do you you get like this creative thing going, and then like you just got to get into some studio somewhere and lay it down, or you'll well, lose your, it. You'll well, lose your it. station's always been pretty good to uh, us, me, and and you know K Rock and K just, just a couple, and so I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then you, you were sassing about me yesterday, so I called out, and you I just sassing you know, about you. I, I, I go, I, I talk, I talk to Stern a lot, and I was like, I, you know, I'm just sick of talking on morning radio. I feel like a DJ. So I wanted to come play. We could make this like Howard show. No, though. no. Boy, no. would I like to do you? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like going on Howard. Actually. Boy, uh, I'll bet you are wild in the sack. I, <laughs> but he has Robin. I mean, it was hard the first time because it was not the feminist thing to do. But uh, I ended up. I really, I like him. Cool. I still think it's really cool that you came in here today. Thank you. Finish this song and then played it on the radio for us. Well, thank you. I hope that uh, folks liked it. Now, will you uh, will you talk to fans? Yeah, that that's my day job. That's your day job. Uh, no, but no, I'm that. What I just did is my day job, and I like my day job better than the court job. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, plus you know, in court, and you gotta get all dressed up and stuff. I know. I, I did buy a Chanel suit at Neiman. So. Did you really? Well, yeah. See, in Atlanta, women are big. And, uh, and, uh, and Beverly Hills is size two, and I, I bought Chanel. I'm going in there and I should right. shoot it, baby. Right, well, Beverly Hills, because, you know, they're all, you know, they all it's, have I, eating disorders, and they're right. all, I think it's mostly you know. caters to, to a lot of Japanese people in Beverly Hills, maybe. But in here in Atlanta, you know, women have, you know, it seemed to be at Neiman's. They're healthy. Yeah. Yes. There were, there were healthy sizes, yeah. Chanel suits. They're healthy. Southern now I, I own a Chanel suit and a Chanel bag, which your guy who picked me up saw my Chanel bag. Yeah, Todd was talking about all the uh, packages from well, Neiman. I was jealous, from, actually. No, they sent them over because the, I was in bed with my... Oh, well, that was nice. Bitch. They sent them over? Yeah. That's great. Well, sure. We'll Tar send it all over. Target's having a sale. I went to Target, and I love Target. Target <laughs> was fun. We don't have a Target in L.A. that you really can reach, so I had a great time at Target. Yeah. What is it all, like, in the uh, areas? There's just one Target in L.A. somewhere. Really? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, That's too bad. The boyfriend goes <laughs> there. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't know why. All right, seven four one zero nine nine seven. We Courtney can take a break if you want to talk to a couple of fans, because I know you said you have to go to the doctor. All right, yeah, but I don't. I don't have any mean calls, and I got to go to the doctor and get. All right, just a few calls, and then. All right. And then so, should, so should I take a break? Should we line yeah, some up? Take a break yeah, and take, take a few break. calls, and she's got to go. Okay. Okay. That's what we're doing with Courtney on ninety nine X. This is Fram, Courtney Love, okay. Rich Shirley, really? still well, that hanging was around. Cord. Courtney's like, answering the request so, line, no, Axel. She's got such great telephone etiquette. What do you want? Hello. Now she's taking some calls. Yeah. Courtney, you want to take that one? Well, that's uh, nice of you, honey. I'm going to take the next call, okay? Take it over oh, no, here no, on the air, Courtney. Courtney. She's taking it. 
Courtney, no. Hey, Courtney. We're going to take it on the We're air. We're going to take it on the air. Uh, okay, wait, wait. I just... Put her on hold. Hi. Okay. Oh. All right. Oh, you catch wow, that one? Uh, okay. All right. We Don't caught that one. Okay. That way? Uh, yeah, you can sing the song. Wait, they want to put you on the air. Uh, yeah, hold on, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Line two. Line two. Thanks for those nice calls. That was nice. Thank you. Okay, now here come the mean ones. <laughs> no, 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 I'm teasing you. Dude. Courtney, I got kidding stitches. With. I know. She's she's infirm, people. Uh, you've got. There we go. Who do you? Which one do you want? I don't know. Uh, take any of them. I think the one being, about Hootie. I think oh. they're being screened. Are they being screened? Go to the one, one about one. Creed. All right. Uh, 99X, hey, you're on with Courtney. Pam, are you serious? Yes, yeah. you are. Okay, first of all, this has been the most fun thing listening to you guys all day. I didn't believe it was true to begin with. Well. So, this is awesome. First of all, Courtney, just want to know we love you no matter what anyone else says. And <laughs> I was going to tell that you way. that Violet probably got me through the worst breakup ever, and it's the best song. Really? It got so, me through a bad breakup. Really? Was that, was that where it came with from? With Billy Corgan. Really? Yeah, I wrote that song about Billy Corgan. Really? Really? Yeah. yeah. Retrospect is strange. <laughs> so, yeah, so. Thank you very much. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you. Uh, hey, how long are you in Atlanta for? Um, well, we got to get this horse, but it's it's um it's down near Early County, so she's getting a horse, but um then she's leaving. And I yeah, I think I they have them at Neiman's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got a Chanel suit, and I'm getting so much crap for it. Okay, I got a Chanel suit. And What's your name on the phone? What's your name? Hi, my name is Elizabeth. Thanks for calling, Elizabeth. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much. Now, now I, I don't think because, you know, you got the Chanel suit. Now, you said in this article, uh, they quoted you as saying that you're cash poor. I don't believe that you're cash poor. Yeah, I know. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. Cash poor she, means notion of suit. She just left her diamond earrings outside and just didn't even care. She's oh, got good taste. Leave her alone. <laughs> okay, let's take some more calls. <laughs> cash right. poor, no. Cash poor, see, I, I think that we should have capitalism still, but yeah. I think that you should have capitalism up to $20 million and then you should stop. And then what? And then it becomes kind of a socialist capitalism. Yeah. That's been my political you know what? theory my whole life. You Think about that the after limit. you made $20 million, then you may be singing a different tune. 99X, hi, you're on with Courtney. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's Forrest. Hey, Forrest. Forrest. Hey. My love, my love, don't lie to me. <gasps> Tell me where, where did you sleep, sleep last night? <laughs> in the rooms. In the rooms. Oh, yeah. We know your kids. Bye, What is that? What is What's that? What's he doing? He was singing a song called In the Pines that nobody knows he really wrote it. And it was on, uh, I used to do that song great. And then Nirvana did it on Unplugged and yeah. kicked my butt. And uh, Lanigan used to do it. Dolly Parton covered it. It's been covered it's a great song. like yeah. 20 something times. I'm well, grabbing that. He was at the Ritz. Was at the Ritz. Was, yeah. Cause we know you're a bitch. I like that kind of. <laughs> <laughs> 99X, how you're on with Courtney? Hello. I'm going to FCC you. Get off the FCC you. All right, let's who's, get some. Who's on four? Who gets. Who, I don't know. No, somebody somebody screen in the phone. Lines? I don't know. I'll go do to it. five. Go to five. All right, here we go. 99X, hi, you're on with Courtney. Hey, Courtney, I love you and your music and whole. Thank you. And uh, a few couple years ago, I tried to. I bought a ticket just to see you with Marilyn Manson. Ooh. And, uh, and I went uh, to the show and you weren't there. Yeah. And I was just wondering what happened there, and when are you going to make it back around next time? Well, we kind of we got we did get forced to open for them by Interscope, and uh, we'd just been to Australia with them, and it's good when I'm the queen because it was us, and then Corn, and then Manson, and everything was fine. And what I really don't like is if there's girls, or certain girls that like us or like me, who are really messed up, and that's really cool because. I know what that feels like. And um, they do not need to be, and they're very young, and they do not need to be taken and raped or have filmed having enema contests. Or and if there's a groupie, I'm so not a prude. And, I, you know, Nine Inch Nails called me a prude. I think that's definitely on record. And, but, yeah, I know. Yeah. But there were some things going on that just weren't cool. There were mm. things going on that weren't cool, yeah. yeah. If the chicks are there and they're back, listen, I've made out with Playboy bunnies. You know, they taught, you know, woo! Really? You know, sure, I'm a rock star. What do you like it happens I mean I'm straight but you know people's birthdays or whatever and so you didn't even get that joke okay so yeah so but going out into the audience and picking up 
14 and 15 year old girls and who obviously cut themselves or messed up and then having to see them in the morning and deal with them and take them home or give them air it's just uncool and that's that okay so the point being last one. yeah I need to sort of be, uh, they need to be opening for me because then I'm the boss and then everything's fine. Mm -hmm. That's a big, decadent, nasty-ass time, but nobody gets hurt. Go, just, can we go back to the making or out of Playboy the bunnies? No, can we go back to the making out of Playboy bunnies? Sure, if you want. <laughs> I think what's funny else. is that a woman can say, I have made out with a woman or two, and, and I'm I know, straight. An actress and then, can't okay, say okay, well, whatever. A rock star can like, say it. Any woman can say, yeah, okay, I've kissed, can't 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 kissed a couple girls, but I'm straight. No, but actresses can't. Okay, an actress, what, okay, fine, but like a guy could never say I've kissed a couple guys but I'm straight like if you kiss one guy you're right. gay yeah. wait okay. I was married to somebody who said that I mean who said what well, my boyfriend kissed somebody he talked to a boy once he talked about it he kissed a boy yeah well then he's bi then he's bi star, well then he's bi no you kissed him you're bi if you're a guy and you kiss another guy he was 18 years old it was a rock star I'm he sorry. kissed him Jimmy's what? uncomfortable in his skin, and there's a lot more people that want to talk to okay. Courtney. 99X, yeah, yeah, yeah. hey, you're on. Hey, 99X. Uh, yeah, I was wanted to ask Courtney if she uh, ever resolved the issues with Ted, because Ted uh, Nugent used to trash her all the time. Oh, yeah, right. Nugent? Yeah, but do you know my Ted Nugent story? Well, he's, you know, uh, he's, when I was a little girl, yeah. and I was trying to be a groupie. <laughs> Wango Tango. What happened? I was backstage and I was wearing a yellow tube top and red painter pants. And uh, I'm not going to tell you the rest of the story. And some he, antlers and he went nuts. Me out of the limo and I, he doesn't remember the incident. He doesn't so wait, did you, did you make out with Ted Nugent? <laughs> Oh, cool. that's unbelievably great. <laughs> because all these groupies made fun of me because I was a virgin. <laughs> so I, I was trying to, like, you know, find the heavy metal guy to lose my... So I didn't what, lose my... You, you didn't lose it to him? No, no. I, but I was, I was... You know what? You can do better than Ted Nugent. I was a kid. Okay, right. I had a really big nose. He's an a-hole. I know, but <laughs> it's funny that he doesn't remember. Hey, thanks for the he call. doesn't remember. Well, yeah, I was, got a good story out of it. 99X, how you're on with Courtney? Hello. Hi. Hello. I love you, Courtney. What is your silver pattern with that accent? Huh? What's your silver pattern? What do you mean? Buttercup, Francis one. I like the accent. I want. I need to know what silver pattern runs in your family. Um. I'm from all over because my dad's in the military. Oh, okay. Well, oh, okay. So Did you have California, a question? Georgia, okay. Maryland. Forget it. I was, it was a Georgia question. All right. Well, hi. Hi. Um, you know, 20 Years in the Dakota? Uh-huh. Why did you write that? I love that song. That's my favorite song. I, I rewrote it for really? those, those Disaster Jane's Addiction shows, and it's really, really good now. I think I'm going to re-record it because I wrote it in two hours. I wrote it like I wrote this one just now, but I put it on a record, and, mm -hmm. I, and I finally rewrote it and made it right. I wrote, I wrote it. It was like this weird Yoko, but I also wanted to steal Hey Jude. I don't know. I've, I love that song. Every time someone comes over to my house, that's the first thing I make them do is listen to that song. I'm going to re-record it. It's the only one I'm going to re-record, but I like it a lot. Thank you, you very much. Are you doing that thing tonight? Is what thing? Rocks? I'm probably going to um, watch um, Hearts War. <laughs> I'm paper viewing this now. We're having a little concert tonight called Downtown Rocks. And uh, the Nickelback? And yeah. Jerry Cantrell? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's hot out, you guys. I know. I have a stitch that I have to get removed. I had to go to the dentist today, too. Did you, who'd you go to? Did you go to Dr. Goldstein? No. He's great. No, I was supposed to talk to you this morning, but I got put on hold, and then I had to go to the dentist. All right. Well, you said hello, and I, 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 I'm glad you got a chance to talk to Courtney. Thank you. Do you find that a lot of your songs, too, like, uh, you know, the song you're writing now, if it doesn't come out, or that you've written uh, called Hold On To Me, if it doesn't come out, if you don't get your deal worked out and it doesn't come out within the next six months, do you feel that your music is timeless and it doesn't matter if it doesn't come out for two more years? No, they got to be fresh. They really? have a boner for them. Yeah, like, like, we had to try and take that, you know, twice and work on it, and I was starting to get bored of it, so I'm glad we played it when we did. So all the music that, that you've so like written. Celebrity Skin, which cost $3 million, and the same producer produced the $4.3 million corn record. Right. They just keep letting Michael spend that money. I don't know what he's spending on. It wasn't the wall, you know. I think cigars. But uh, he, uh, you know, he, I kept saying, you know, it's the first take. 
and he kept making me sing like I was, you know, Cheryl Crow or something. Yeah, he's a perfectionist. Yeah, you are a scratch vocal kind of, you know, singer. With the, with the acting too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a first, first You're like Sinatra. I'll give you two take, takes. Two Those takes. are your two choices. No, I, I'm, I'm good on the first take. So that's, you know, that's when my, I get a boner for when you uh, When you sing, I mean, you sing with balls. I mean, you just belt it. No, I sing with ovaries. Okay. Well, no. <laughs> when you, like, when you were first, uh, start, when you first started singing, were your influences, especially like your stage persona, was it mostly guy, guy bands or were they girl bands? No, the reason I hung out with the group is because I wanted to see what, how rock stars, you know, did things. And, and when we played the Midtown here. Uh huh. Yeah. That Cheap Trick played. Cheap Trick was my first backstage I ever went to. So I saw like. Um I just kept, and I kept going to cheese your stuff, like, you know, what was it, Molly Hatchet and uh -huh. Sammy Hagar, and, you know, I'd get back and I'd sit on these amps and just watch these guys and, and think, you know, why can't I do that? And I was also really good at football. Really? <laughs> yeah, I had my hormones done. I have a lot of testosterone. She's good at football. Did your hormones done? Yeah, like, they do a blood panel. Right, huh? And I actually have a lot of testosterone. Do you? Yes, I do. Right. It doesn't make me, you know... No, it does not. But I, mean, I don't have hair on my chest. No, you do not. Okay. <laughs> we, a lot of people have seen that to know. Yeah. Well, there, yeah. there you go. Let's take a few more, because sure. Courtney's got to get right. out of here soon. All right. 99X, hi, you're on. Hi, uh, this is Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Hi, hi I read your Nicole. autobiography. I mean... I don't have an autobiography. Your don't, biography don't by Poppy Z. Bright. Don't do that. Don't. We're not talking about them. She doesn't... She did, you didn't like that book, obviously. I, I, I was I was in New Orleans. I was a mess. I was mad at that weenie and that band, and I just let her look at some diaries. And I was dumb. So are you friends with Poppy or not? I'm not not friends with her. I just... I did a dumb thing. Oh, well, I really, really enjoyed it, and I just really incredibly admire you and your music. You have no idea what it's done for me and, like, so many of my friends. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. I'm sorry. I'm jonesing for a smoke, so I'm, I'm not being in. We'll take care of you, Courtney. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. Thank you very much. Okay. I love you. Bye. Thank Thanks you. for the call. Well, God, you've hung Shoot out here him. all afternoon. Yeah, she's been here all day. 10.30? She, uh, she called us, what, no, first I at 9.30? I called 30? at 9.30. No. I did, didn't I? Eight and nine, about she, nine called, thirty. Yeah. Okay. Or she spent a lot of time here. To, she could get through for the first thirty minutes no, though, because no I, one thought it was her. No, I, I no, I, I called him. He believed me. Oh, okay. He yeah. bought it right off. Mm -hmm. He didn't fake it, but he put me on hold for a long time. Well, that's what we do here. We put people on hold for a long time. Yeah. I called back and I got first ring though. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take one or two more. Okay. When, sure. when do you think? When do you think that? You're ready to go out and perform again live. As soon as I get this record done, and um, you know I have a mediation with the president of the label mm -hmm. this week, and um, there's a few things I can't leave behind. There's a lot of other artists depending on me. I mean, from the Dixie Chicks to Alanis Morissette to BB King's Estate to the Hendrix Estate to, I mean, there's that literally thousands of, to the Chambers oh, brothers. Oh, tell I me the Dixie Chicks got a bad deal. Listen, there, yeah, they did. I'm gonna tell you something. All right, when we, you know. I mean, my my, uh, my daughter went over to David Geffen's house, who I'm actually friends with, and, you know, don't poop where you eat. I, I like him, and mm -hmm. we don't talk about this stuff, but, you know, I've known him a long time. And, but uh, she said, why does he have so much money? And I felt like, you know, Bonfire of the Vanities, and I said, because people like me and your daddy bake him a big cake, and then we get a few crumbs. And the statistician that's in my lawsuit has done over 9,000 audits of recording it, you know, and it's all, you know, rich rock stars, my swimming pool is not as big as it. It's so not that. I mean, I'm talking about people. It's not about me. I have money. These are Manolas. So, yeah, okay. But, <laughs> but it's, there is a duty that I have and that Don Henley has picked up as well in doing, which is there are so many people who, like, you know, bands that aren't cool, rat. Fog hat, um, you know things that um, are not groovy and cool. You know the gin blossoms, and those people are going. They can't afford lawyers, and they can't afford audits, and they're owed money to live. And you know, it, it, they always want me to go on 60 Minutes or Diane Sawyer, and I'm like, why don't we find the people? Ask 10 of your staff their favorite songs 10 years ago, and I'll show you nine destitute people who do not have health care. Yeah. And that's really so. If I can get this worked out with Universal, I still have a lobbyist in Sacramento. I have. A, a great senator in California 
um, named John Burton who says, you're the only honest woman in this state. So I, he, he really likes me um, and is going to push this bill through that will affect. You know, Axel and I were talking about this Good earlier. Luck. One of the best things on the Internet. I is have a link on my page. If you go to 99x.com and go to my page, it says, how rich is your favorite rock star? And it's a link to an article that was written, you know, uh, with you about the... No, by me. By you. Oh, okay, by you about where the money goes in a record deal. Yeah. Yeah, for any band starting out, it's a must read. Well, yeah, and it was actually there was there was a, a an article that Steve Albini, if you remember who he is, wrote mm -hmm. in The Baffler that people think I copped that from. I hate that, it's, you know, so cuz the song that you just heard as you know was written by Moby and Dave Grohl. Um I don't write anything myself. Yeah. But no, actually I, I mentioned I mentioned 7-Eleven in that article as an homage to Albini's mouth, which was wrong. Um, so I, I know I know so much about legislative intent right now that I just am sick of it. And so it's really fun to just sit here with Rich and rock. You should yep. start your own That's label. A good statement. And say short words. Two eight five five B legislative intent. I, <laughs> have you done the thing where you have to testify in front of like hearings uh, yes, and all I've that? Yes, I've been in the California room, but I just ended up tell, of, telling jokes and Don Henley kept kicking me. Uh, yeah. That's and then of, there was like Senator Betty, who's kind of a tool of the teachers union, and she goes to the, there's like the seven dwarfs from the record company, and they're like big tobacco guys. I mean, uh -huh. they're lying. And she goes, so you guys get kids off the streets, and you teach them how to dance, and you teach them how to sing, and then they want to. Then they get famous and then they want to leave? And I was just like, jeez, Senator Bay. Um, and then I insulted her publicly and she left the committee. So that's good. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> having a big mouth is a good thing. Don't I know it. Uh, good, I'm glad. Yeah, okay, we can share that. Oh, yeah. Two more calls? Yeah, two more calls. Two more and then i got to get my stitch out. All okay. right, here we go. Yeah, we can